This is a review of alkane nomenclature. And we're going to do some drawing structures from the names as well as naming molecules from their structure. So we're going to start with drawing structures from the names and I'm taking examples from problem 334 which is in the out of the new book. First example that we're going to do is 3-ethyl octane. Whenever you draw the structure from the name, the easiest way to do it is start by drawing the name of the parent alkane. This is an octane. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight carbons. And then we want to put an ethyl group on carbon number three. The next one is four isopropyl decane. Decane is a 10 carbon alkane, so we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And on carbon number 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, we have an isopropyl group, which looks like that. Our next example is sec butyl cycloheptane. So we're going to start by drawing the cycloheptane ring, which is actually not the easiest ring to draw. Seven-membered ring. This is one, two, three, four, five, six atoms. One more atom. That's not a very pretty cycloheptane. And then we want to put a sec butyl group on it. Remember, that's the four-carbon group that's attached at carbon number two. The next example is two, three, dimethyl. For propyl nonane, nonane is a nine carbon chain, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Two, three dimethyl means we have a methyl group on number two and number three, and a propyl group on number four, one, two, three, four. Propyl group has three carbons. Two, two, four, four, tetra. Methyl hexane. We're going to start by drawing the hexane. One, two, three, four, five, six, and put methyls, two of them on carbon number two and two of them on carbon number four. Our next example is trans 1, 3 diethyl cyclo. Pentane. So we'll start with the cyclopentane. We want to put ethyl groups on carbon number two and, or sorry, number one and three, and we want them to be trans, so one up, one down. There's two different ways that we can write this, one by just drawing one line up and the other line down, but we talked about in class how that's not the best way to go about indicating the cis and trans isomers and cyclics. So we're going to use wedge and a dash, and we could do it like this, or you could use lines for the ethyl group, CH2, CH3. You could have this be your wedge and this be your dash. Uh, they're both going to communicate the same thing. Next example is cis, one ethyl, four methyl, Cyclohexane. I'm not going to draw this in the chair confirmation because that's definitely not going to be on the test. So we're just going to draw a regular cyclohexane. And we've got two substituents on carbon number one and carbon number four. One of them is an ethyl, one of them is a methyl. Okay, so now let's do some examples of naming molecule based on its structure. And I'm going to take these from problem 37, chapter 3 out of the new book. And the first one they give us is in the condensed formula, CH3C, and then in parentheses CH3, and that's twice. 
And then we have CH, and then in parentheses, CH2, CH3. And then we have a CH2, CH2, CH with two CH3s at the end. I think it's easier to convert this into line structure or at least a Lua structure because it's going to be really difficult to see the branching when it's written in condensed formula like this. I'm going to put it into sort of a Lua structure. It's not going to be completely a Lua structure, but it's going to be easier to look at than, than the condensed formula. Drawing it out like this will make it easier for us to find the longest carbon chain. So I see one possibility would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven carbons. Another possibility, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, we have a tie. Oh, I wonder if this is the same example I did in class. When we have a tie, we want to select the carbon chain that has the most substituents. That's going to help us avoid having complex substituents, which are trickier to name. And that chain is going to be from end to end, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, like that. So here's our long, longest chain. This is a heptane. And then we want to number the carbons in this chain so that our four substituents have the lowest set of numbers. That numbering is going to go from left to right so that we're going to end up with two substituents on the t carbon number two, one on carbon number three, and one on carbon number six. So we have three methyl substituents and one ethyl. Ethyl comes first in the alphabet, so this is a 3-ethyl and a 2-2-6-trimethyl heptane. Next example. We have CH3, CH2, CH. Down off of that, we have a CH. CH3, CH3. And then we have back up to the top chain there, we have another two CH2s, a CH, a CH3, and another CH3, CH, CH3 coming off that second from the last carbon. So again, we want to find the longest carbon chain one, two, three, four, five, six, seven if we go straight across. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 if we branch it down around. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So it looks like it's going to be 8. And we can get to 8 either going like this or going up like this. If we number it straight across like this, make that our parent chain, we end up with a complex substituent down here, which we could name it as an isopropyl. But it's probably going to be easier for us to name this molecule if we make this our longest carbon chain. So it's a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, that, not that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight carbon chain. We've got a substituent here, 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 and here. If we number it left to right, we're going to have substituents on two, three, six, and seven. Two, three, six, Seven. If we number right to left, our substituents are on one, two, three, six, seven. So it's a tie either way. In that case, we want to put the substituents that come first in the alphabet with the lowest number. Ethyl comes first, so we're going to number left to right so that the ethyl substituent has the smallest number. So this is going to be two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have our ethyl group on carbon number three. We have methyl groups on two, six, and seven trimethyl octane. Now I have to pause this video because I can only put 10 minutes on at a time, but I'm going to do some more examples of this in a part two.